Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back for another animation analysis video and today we are going to be taking a look at the big man himself, Gohan Beast. I have been looking forward to making this video for so long now, ever since he came out in the movie. I cannot wait for this man to come out in Dokkan. Now, a couple of things to note before we get started with today's video. Of course, we did Orange Piccolo earlier today, so definitely go check out that video if you have not yet, or go watch that one after this one, because they do talk about Gohan a little bit in that video, and kind of comparing him to Piccolo a little bit in that video, which I'll also do in this video too. Keep in mind, when we are taking a look at this video, um, I always like to say this before my animation analysis videos, I am not a professional by any means, I just enjoy it, I think it's fun doing this type of thing, taking a look at the animations, and I think I'm pretty knowledgeable about the Dokkan animations and the way that they work, and the way that they work in the back end of things, right, to be able to take a look at these from a more technical and critical perspective, right? But keep in mind, your boy ain't an animation professional by any means. As well, another reason why this video is coming out a little bit later than the normal animation analysis videos that I do, that I usually do it the day after, is not only because obviously these units basically came out like on Christmas or like just after Christmas, family, friends being over, all that type of stuff, um, you know, was obviously uh, taking up a bunch of time. And of course, then doing have to do two data downloads, right, for JP and Global. Finally getting to this point, and I also wanted to wait for the footage to supplement in here from the boy Jihad. Of course, Jihad is the man who always does these Dokkan and anime comparisons that are fantastic. He does such a good job with these. Um, he is the man that I trust to do these every single time. Definitely go check out his channel link in the description below. He has literally like every single unit that has come out within the last couple of years um, done like this format. And it's really cool seeing what they take from the original source material and especially comparing it to Dokkan Metal. But I know I have gotten a lot of requests to include this in the video because sometimes there'll be things that I complain about with the animations that are just accurate to the source material. And even though Dokkan, it kind of looks like it's a eh thing in the game, it's just how the original was and they're just keeping accurate to the source material. So I've been trying to include these in more lately when I can and I felt like for these units specifically, um, they were very very important to include um, because obviously not only are these such big units but with the nature of these animations and how they are constructed um, I felt that this was important to include in here so let's go ahead and get into this by the way Right before we do, of course, if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe, all that funny YouTuber stuff. It really helps out your boy, and I really appreciate it as well. Um, I will be doing a animation analysis video on the Int Pan, Goten and Trunks, Free to Play Gohan Awakening, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not going to be doing that video today, though. Gohan Beast and Orange Piccolo will be the two videos for you today. Uh, it is also going to be probably like two one hour or more videos in one day, so I also don't want to, you know, overwhelm you with content. But this this video will be coming out later this week, probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, but I just wanted to say that I'm going to do this one because it's just an extra video to do. So look forward to that. Now, as per usual, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy on the normal speed and look through his animations one time before we go through the frame by frame and, of course, take a look at the original footage as well. Alright, so this guy is a character that I have quite a few thoughts on, right? Obviously, this being basically my most anticipated unit of the year, I have a lot to say when it comes to this unit. Let me take a quick drink of water real quick. Hydrate or dehydrate, baby, of course. So, the ultimate animations, right? I think overall, I like them, but I feel like there's a lot of problems with I have with them, and I think there's a lot of things that are really choppy with them that I definitely want to talk about in more detail when we actually take a look at them um, on the frame by frame. However, with the boy Gohan Beast himself, I think it's kind of undeniable that, like, this is the best animation in the game, right? Like, I don't think that you're going to be hard-pressed to find 
anybody <laughs> who's going to disagree with you on that front, right? I think it's pretty unanimous that this is like one of, if not the best, in my opinion, absolutely the best animation in the game, right? Like, it is insane how crazy accurate they were to the source material. And by the way, I cannot wait to take a look at that compared to the source material. That is going to be fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at these animations first and foremost. For one, we start off, of course, with Gohan going Super Saiyan, which is a pretty cool introduction to this unit because obviously they basically could have just kind of had him come on the scene as Ultimate Gohan, but they actually introduce Super Saiyan Gohan in the beginning of this. And something that I think is kind of cool with that is that, like, it's not an exact connection, but low key, it almost kind of makes the base form AGL free to play ultimate or ultimate Gohan. I'm sorry, base form Gohan that we got, right? The one with the glasses and of course Piccolo's cloak, right? It kind of makes it feel like that one, you know, now that it still kind of awakens into the Super Saiyan one, then that one almost kind of transitions into this unit. I know that's not really exactly how it works, but in my mind, you know, I just thought that that was kind of cool that they sort of did that little bit of succession, right? So we have this very nice close-up shot of Gohan's eye here, right? Obviously with the key, the key, the key flaring looks fantastic, if I do say so myself. And then we cut to this amazing shot of Gohan squatting down here and powering up which looks fantastic right i think they did a pretty good job here too um, of trying to capture that sort of style of the cg i think especially this sequence right here right after he you know is glowing this part here looks so good i love the way that this looks right I think that they did such a good job of making this stylistically close to the movie, right? It looks fantastic. I love the way Gohan throws his arms up here. This is all so very accurate to the movie, and I really, really like it a lot. Fantastic with the effects and everything like that. By the way, such a good transition here, too, um, going from the white sort of smoke that's coming around him to then having that fade to the pillar up in the sky by the way i have to say the pillar itself is not only animated pretty well but i really like the way that the sky is animated with obviously this is supposed to be like the red ribbon army um i guess you would call it like shield right it's sort of like the force field that's around the base and in the movie of course gohan powering up literally breaks the shield and this looks great right i love these little effects that they have here sort of showering down those look really really nice and with the actual crack in the sky, the little bits of like glass shards, or I guess it would kind of be like energy. They never really explain if it's like a glass thing, but I don't think it is because Piccolo just flies right out of it. It's sort of like an illusion technology, you know, blocking the view of the base type of thing. But this looks really, really nice. I think they did a very bang up job with that. And then of course we cut to Gohan here, which is literally exactly how it is in the movie. Now I did want to point out, right? With this scene oh by the way here let's just get you the frame by frame by the way again dokkan's accuracy is always so spectacular with this type of thing even these impact frames are accurate to how it looks but yeah this looks so good right like in comparison to the movie i think they absolutely nailed um you know the look between the two of like keeping it looking like this sort of cgi style and dokkan while still kind of having it be the dokkan style it looks good so obviously we have this like little cut here to Gohan right from the sky cracking to then it zooming in on Gohan I will say it is a little bit of a shame that they don't zoom in more because you can see right here obviously this is such an iconic scene from the movie with Gohan standing here like this like this was in all the promotional material and all the trailers and stuff like that right so it's kind of interesting to me that they didn't go a little bit more close up right because obviously the top of gohan's hair is cut off and they basically cut it off at like his thighs in the movie but um in the dokkan version obviously there's a little bit of space between his hair and they kind of cut it off like at his mid shin right so it's interesting that they do this perspective dokkan does like to do this a lot where there are shots that are kind of close up they like to pull them back a little bit which is cool because then you can sometimes get a little bit more perspective than you would normally would but i would kind of like it to just be more accurate to this original piece also, they don't really do a crazy far zoom, 
right? The way that Gohan is here, he's still pretty decently large in the frame, and obviously here he's super tiny, and they zoom in super quick, right? It's just kind of interesting that they don't really do that, you know, crazy of a zoom like they do in the movie. The other thing is that I wanted to say is that besides that Super Saiyan scene in the beginning, I feel like this shot does not really feel like they're going for that CGI style. We talked about this a lot in the Piccolo video, where it feels like in some of the scenes of these super attacks, they're really trying to go in on the CGI aesthetic, right? And trying to make the animations look as close to the CGI in the movie as they can. But then you have other scenes, and I feel like this is a good example of that, right? Hydrate or die, baby. Where you have just a very Dokkan looking animation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing for the style of how this looks, right? But I feel like it definitely doesn't scream to me the superhero style. It's clear that this is from superhero, obviously. But it just doesn't really scream that style to me. However, this shot does look very good. The lightning is very accurate. The key is very accurate around Gohan. I think they did a good job of this shot. I think it looks good. It's just stylistically, it doesn't look exactly like the original, right? Okay, so now we move on to the 12 key super attack here. So this is one that I think is really interesting. I think his supers are really interesting because it's kind of an amalgamation of different scenes. Hello, Piccolo. Some different scenes from the movie, right? Sorry, I'm trying to go back here. Let me actually close these orange Piccolo tabs because we're not going to need them. Then I won't be clicking on them throughout the video. There we go. So... With this scene here, obviously, we have basically the same Gohan assets from, you know, moments ago with this scene, right? Because, I mean, it's literally the scene right afterwards, so it makes sense that they would reuse the assets for this, right? Because, I mean, it's literally the same thing, right? So then, obviously here, we have Gamma 1 um, jumping back, and he does actually fly up in the sky, which is cool that they actually have this perspective here. And I do have to say, Gohan crouching down here on the Dokkan version actually looks really, really nice, if I do say so myself, right? He looks so good when he's kind of crouching down there. I think that's animated very well, and obviously accurate to the movie too. And then, of course, we have him jump up, right? Immediately going into the card art, by the way, very quick jump to the card art. I did also want to look um, here, right? So with this, ooh, this is interesting. So this is basically just a static PNG, right? As he's moving, you can see Gohan kind of twists his body a little bit as he's flying forward. And once we finally get from this to this, right? I don't think the transition between assets here is too bad. It's a little bit too far away to kind of like really make it noticeable. But then when we get to here, you can see that this is just the same PNG flying forward. And I think it doesn't help that Dokkan's is a little bit slower than the movie, it seems, because Gohan gets there in a lot less of a pace, or maybe it's just the perspective that is the difference in the change. But the PNG just kind of sliding there is a little bit unfortunate. Like Gohan's hair doesn't even move there, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, this animation is a lot of jumping around, like a lot of jumping around between different scenes um, in this fight, right? So immediately we have Gohan punch forward, right? Which I think this looks really good um, on the Dokkan side. And I see what they're doing with the shading here, right? Again, the sort of lighting effects for the key look really good. Um, and here, this is kind of interesting because of course they can't really animate the enemy grabbing the fist like of course they have in the movie with Gamma 1. Um, taking his fist so they kind of make this almost as if like the attack succeeded basically and you have Gohan here this asset is very low quality but I think it's because literally seconds later right they zoom out and obviously now it doesn't look as bad because you're not looking at it zoomed in like this right but we do have pretty much movie accuracy his legs do kind of do a little bit of a shimmy here right like they should be already kind of spread out like it feels a lot more natural in the movie him moving his legs apart like this we're here they're instantly spread apart like this um but the actual movement is very close to how it is in the movie you can see literally the way that he sort of readies up here and then immediately right smashes down into the enemy right even the follow through on the punch it's pretty accurate to how it is in the movie i think one thing even like look at that jump between poses is the same one thing to note here with the Dokkan version, though, is that this is not at all close to the style 
of the movie. I feel like I said this in the Piccolo video too, and I'm going to say it again here. Piccolo for the Awakened animations, I feel like does a lot better job at representing superhero style, whereas Ultimate Gohan's animations definitely are really lacking in that department, which is such a shame because we talked about a ton in the AGL Free to Play Gohan video and the video for the Gammas that I was really hoping that they would kind of keep with the CG style, but it's clear that they decided not to go that route because this is a lot more of a Dokkan-esque style with the way that these asset pieces are. Then, of course, um, you know, is closer to the actual movie. So going back to right here, right, with the slap forward, this does look pretty good. The angles are very spot on, right? Even the shading with the face does look pretty good and like the effects that you can see. Very nice. I feel like the angle for this one is like a tiny bit different than how it is in the anime, but definitely not too bad. Um, and even the swing forward looks really, really good. This is definitely a small bit of a different pose. Gohan's arm is absolutely a little bit higher up than here in the movie where it's kind of like straight out. This one's a little bit more like he's holding it up. Let me get a quick drink of water. Always hydrate. I really need to make merch that says hydrate or digrate. I think that might just be something that I have to make. <laughs> Somebody recommended that in the comments one time. Anyway, nonetheless, then we of course have Gohan wrap around to hit Gamma 1 here. And this kick is very, very accurate to the movie right now of course um you can't have the enemy sort of stagger like gamma one does so this is sort of a dokkan sprite moment here but even this looks really good right like this is pretty accurate to the movie but it definitely feels sort of like <sighs> it's a little bit weird because this is so far away compared to the movie right the movie shot is so close up and in your face, right? Very close to the action, whereas the Dokkan one is kind of far away, and I feel like it leaves a lot to be desired. The other thing that makes me think, too, is that I wonder if they made these farther away, because we've been seeing a lot in this animation so far, that these animations that are, like, obviously a lot more farther away, they can make them more low quality because they don't have to make as higher quality assets and as detailed drawings, right? I wonder if they do that on purpose just so that they can cut corners, cut budget a little bit, and, you know, then they can focus on bigger scenes, right? But it is kind of a shame that some of the stuff then tends to get a little bit underrepresented, like the scene, right? This should be this nice close-up action. You have this faraway scene that isn't as detailed, right? Then we have um, the boy fly towards the ground, right? And smack the ground, which is cool that they actually have a pretty good perspective here um, on this. Definitely very, very nice. But... Here is where the shenanigans begin. This is why I was kind of prepping you by watching this mainly on the comparison video here. With this, right, we have immediately jumping into a completely different scene from the movie, right? This is from when they are all firing the key blasts at cell max right that is what this scene is referencing here so if you thought that this scene looked a little bit strange you would be right because of course um you know this is not exactly where it is in this ultimate gohan fight it's also weird because gohan obviously isn't making a fist in this scene he has this kind of like sort of like the classic uh dragon ball like ready up hand pose that like goku does a lot when he stances up but it feels kind of empty here too because obviously with the sizing of the frame right it's interesting that for this one they didn't zoom it in because i feel like that would have benefited from this scene feeling a lot more empty because of course in the actual scene that it's from you have goten trunks and piccolo all here to kind of fill out the rest of the space leaving the actual one to feel a lot more empty um as well right Definitely the key blast is basically just generic Dokkan circle that's kind of glowing, which is a little bit unfortunate to be honest with you, considering how nice and varied that the original is. They do do a good job with the lighting though, obviously do actually have this light cast onto Gohan here, um, which you can tell right is actually like casting onto him just like they have in the original. So they blast the key here, um, which again is basically just your straight line and it kind of grows a little bit. It kind of looks more like Trunks' almost. Um, but 
We have the Key Blast fly towards the ground. Um, and very anticlimactic, to be honest with you, with the ending. The explosion is just kind of okay. I do like these little yellow parts that kind of fly out from the explosion. I do think that's cool. And the smoke cloud is fine. But look at the difference in the beam, right, that actually flies down. The beams, because of course this is like multiple that are wild and out and flying towards Cell Max, right, and crashing into him. They have a lot of dynamic movement to them. This is just a circle on the end of a stick <laughs> that then they cut to then so they don't have to have the explosion there and they can have a little far away explosion. Absolutely lacking in my opinion. And we are about to see a heck of a lot more of these kind of mashups between scenes here. We are going to take a quick break from the actual animations though because um, we do get a counter animation from Gohan here. So this scene, I will say, ironically enough, I think I like this counter more than I like his 12 key and his 18 key, because this is not only incredibly accurate to the movie, but it looks very, very nice. So you have this key blast five forward. It's cool that they colored it red because obviously, right, you're not going to be fighting characters who aren't necessarily throwing red key, blaze, key based, excuse me, attacks at you. But it's still cool to see that they included this because obviously, you know, it's just more accurate to the movie. I think Dokkan can sometimes uh, you know give you a little bit of suspension of disbelief um, or suspension of belief maybe when it comes to like things because they do their best to sort of integrate all these different scenes together right like amalgamating you know different characters from different sections of the anime and different art styles all into one coherent scene and attack right and these characters battling it out against each other but I think for stuff like this it's okay to just kind of have this anime accuracy so this looks great. I love the motion blur that they have. Obviously, it looks exactly like the movie, right? This shot looks good, too. I do kind of wish they used a little bit more higher quality assets for this when they're zooming into them. I understand why they don't, though, because obviously it's going to be zoomed in and changed in a moment anyway. And Gohan's expression just definitely doesn't look how it looks in the movie, too. It's definitely a little bit different. And, not to mention his actual pose, even though it being the same, the angle that you're looking at him from is a little bit different. In the movie, Gohan's shoulder is definitely a little bit closer to the camera, where you can definitely see more of the chest in the Dokkan version, and his arm is kind of off to the side a little bit more. However, when he does swing his hand forward, you can see that that is just one frame going from one to another, and that is extremely anime accurate. I do think that that looks very, very nice. Swinging his arm forward to then get ready to knock the key blast away this is basically a frame by frame recreation that looks so good right breaking through the key blast and sort of shattering it off to the side right this is so good and they nailed the angle 100 percent look at that they even nailed like the exact shape of the key that looks so cool right you have the key blast sort of fly away gohan's hair fluttering in the wind and this shot even, unfortunately, there's no magenta in the game where they could have the sprite go. But look at this. Even the explosions are very accurate to how it is in the original, right? With them just sort of colliding with the ground, um, you know, as obviously he just smacked them away. The explosions are definitely a lot more cool in the movie for sure. But I think they still get the job done in Dokkan for sure. Ironically enough, albeit that this animation is so short, I actually really, really like this one a lot. Um... I think that especially like when he actually smacks it away right with this section how accurate it is to the anime and then of course the angle itself just looks so good they absolutely nailed it personally i like this better than the 12 key which is kind of crazy that a counter i think i can like more than a whole animation but i do um i just think it looks really nice okay so now we move on to the 12 key. So this is interesting. As soon as I saw this, right? As soon as I saw this first scene, I recognized this as not being Ultimate Gohan um, in the original source material of this. And you can see that for this, of course, it is Super Saiyan Gohan um, with him flying forward. So it's interesting that they use this for Ultimate. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, right? Because obviously, since we don't have too many animations from Superhero, it makes sense that they would take stuff from, you know, kind of different sections and whatnot, right? But what I do think is jarring about this is you immediately cut to this scene, right? You go from him flying forward to this, 
which I feel like doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, maybe if they had him stopping mid-air. And this also looks like he's a lot higher in the sky than he actually is, right? Going from this scene right here with Gohan, you know, being up so high to then, bam, right, being lower to the ground, right, and definitely not in the clouds is definitely a little bit jarring. But... They do a fantastic job of getting this as accurate to the movie as possible. Even these little anime motion lines that are on, or I guess it would be the motion blur, rather, is what I should say, right? That's in the movie is present on the animation a little bit, which is nice to see, right? Um, they don't animate Gohan spinning around as much here, right? You can see in the movie he kind of spins into position a little bit more. But once we get here, um, we are basically like on the same, right? He even gets in the same position here. And then, of course, winds up to punch Gamma 1 in the head. Unfortunately, obviously, it's not a jaw shot um, in Dokkan because sprite moment. But um, it still looks really good nonetheless. And this section looks very nice, right? Even down to the movement of him kicking around looks fantastic, right? I think this looks very, very good for sure. So obviously, um, with this shot here, we have Gohan land on the ground, which is interesting that I guess they kind of reference this with obviously this is when um, they come to his house. And then, of course, you know, they're like threatening him like, oh, we got your daughter or whatever, you know, and they like flicks the gun away from them. And the guy goes to get it. And then obviously he puts his foot on it. Um, with this shot, right, I think that's a cool little reference there. But they do this as kind of like a way to symbolize him landing right when he gets on the ground there but the weird thing about it is that he kind of already has perfectly landed here right like in the dokkan version but i guess it's because it gets cut off a little bit on the side that they kind of want to you know make you understand oh he's now standing on the ground um which then of course we go to here like this and this shot, of course, a super iconic one from the movie. I'm glad that they put this in here because obviously, um, you know, this is a shot that was in a ton of trailers as well. Um, definitely very, very cool that they included this. And again, even very movie accurate. It is a little bit weird because, of course, this scene is with Cell Max and they're, you know, kind of using it as this version um, with Gohan, you know, in the movie, basically, like in the fight with uh, Gamma 1. So it's interesting that they just kind of include this as sort of like a transitional piece into here, which I do kind of wish that they like zoomed out on Gohan's face and then they had this rather than just cutting from one thing to another. A lot of jump cuts in these essays is a frequent thing um, that I am really noticing here. So then we begin to get into the shenanigans, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, this is a reference to when Gohan is powering up in Super Saiyan um, and even the way that they zoom in, but... We'll get to that, don't you worry, right? Even the way that he kind of moves here, right? They sort of mask it with this impact frame, right? But then they have him powering up and obviously squatting down. But this is like frame for frame, right? This scene where he's the great Saiyan man. Now, granted, this could just be another angle of this shot where he's powering up in Super Saiyan because this pose is basically the same as this one. But it is kind of undeniable how close it is to this. And granted, obviously with Dragon Ball, they hit the same poses all the time. And of course, they can't have a unique angle for every single time they hit the same pose. Like, I understand that. But it's weird that they take it from this. And it gets weirder. Because after we get to the card arts, we now have this, right? First of all. We have this shot here, which I really, really like. This is actually a Dokkan original, right? Because you can see that there's no comparison to this here. This shot here, where we have the Red Ribbon RB base. Um, oh, I didn't even notice that it's shaped like the Red Ribbon. I did not even notice that. That is literally the Red Ribbon logo for the base. That is so sick. Okay, so these cool light effects. I really like this. That obviously is sort of like implying that Gohan is powering up, right? Really, really like this. The light exploding everywhere. Even just this little bit of light at the bottom sort of representing the aura, you know, coming off of Gohan here. Of course, the key shooting up into the sky looks great. You have even that little foom that comes off of it. They zoom down in to Gohan doing the Kamehameha. <sighs> All right. So let's talk about this, right? They reference the Broly movie Kamehameha once again. They have used this Kamehameha 
for so many animations. Obviously, the tech bros, right? They use it for them because, of course, that's the animation that, you know, literally is what it, the card is, right? It's like from that movie. They use this for Gogeta, the tech one. They use this for STR Vegito. I think they use this for another Gohan as well. It's so weird to me that they would take the shot from the Broly movie again for this when there's so much other stuff from this movie that they could have included. Like, there's even more from the Gamma 1 fight. Like, when they go underground, right? And they're, like, discussing a little bit when they're talking, right? And Gohan's struggling to fight him. They could have easily made those attacks just land, right? Such a strange one. And with this, right, they even try and do a little bit of rotoscoping here. But it's so strange because it doesn't really look like rotoscoping. It kind of just looks like Gohan's turning on a turntable, essentially, right? Because you then have this immediate transition into this pose, which I think this pose break, I guess you would call it, is really ugly, personally. And you also then immediately have the ball form in his hands, which is just kind of like, mm, I wish it obviously had more of a fluid transition. I do like the electricity shooting off, though, and obviously the key does look very nice here, as well as the aura, too. Gohan's hair fluttering around does look good for what this animation is, but you do get a little bit of a backup here, right? Like they actually have it sort of zoom out, which I do think that part looks very nice, whereas the beginning looks a little bit janky. I do like this, though. I like this impact frame here. I think that that's really cool um, with the in-between. And then they try and reference this angle here where Gohan is doing the Kamehameha with him squatting down and then basically they try and mimic the angle from the Broly movie here. Oh boy, that face is a little bit yucky. But then they do the funny Gohan face. This face has sort of become notorious in Dokkan animations um, because they've reused this Kamehameha so many times that other characters that aren't even Dokkan, or that aren't even Dokkan, that aren't even Gohan, excuse me, have this face. But I think that this doesn't look awful. It's just not great and it doesn't exactly scream this movie to me, right? Like, Gohan basically doesn't fire Kamehameha throughout the whole film, right? So the fact that they include this in here just feels kind of eh to me. I like the Kamehameha, the Kamehameha, <laughs> the effects of this, right, I think look cool. However, we then get to this shot after the Fade of White, which is a reference to the scene from, I believe this is either the T.O.P. or when Goku and Gohan are training for the T.O.P., and we have this shine, this side shot of Gohan, which, like, the lighting is okay and the asset for Gohan looks okay, but I just feel like it doesn't really look that good. Like, the Kamehameha itself looks good, and the actual smoke effects, the lightning, right? Like, all that stuff, everything around this, even the little, like, effect behind him looks cool. But this angle is just so unnecessary. Like, why was this included? I don't know. I feel like this animation would have been a lot more fluid because he doesn't also look like he's really firing it up too heavily, right? He's definitely tilting it up a little bit, but for the angle to be from this to then that far up in the sky, that is absolutely not the angle that he is tilting it at, right? I would have much preferred if they, if they were going to do this, right, they would have done this because clearly he's squatting back and going to fire this up into the sky, going from this to immediately having the beam fly up into the sky. That would have made so much more sense than including this in-between scene that I feel like doesn't even look that good from the first place. This reminds me a lot of Fizz Kid Goku, that kind of shot, that angle was the thing that reminded me of when I first saw that for sure. So then, of course, we have um, the beam hit the enemy, which, you know, explodes in the sky, which doesn't look too bad again, right? It's pretty basic. Um, it's nothing too crazy to write home about. You know, it's just all right, essentially. Um, and then you just sort of have it dissipate against the camera. So, with Gohan's animations, right? Because we're about to get into the Gohan Beast scene. With the animations for Gohan here, right? I like the scenes where they take it directly from Superhero. And I do like, you know... Some of the little references that they make, however, the amalgamation of things, and especially using 
this Kamehameha again is so boring. And this entire scene is so lackluster. There's so many cooler shots from the movie that they could have added into this. And what's more, me talking about how a lot of these like far away scenes, right, where they kind of are fighting at a distance, right? Where in the movie, they're a lot more clear. They use these little bit of lower quality assets for this. What it really feels like with this guy is that they could, they knew that they could kind of like not try as hard. I don't want to say cop out because cop out seems like way too harsh of a word to use. But it kind of feels like that they were able to sort of do this a little bit and not make the 12 and 18 key as high quality as it could have been with nice close ups and whatnot, right? Ironically enough, this being basically the only close up in that animation. Um, by making the you know, actual fight scenes kind of far away and using these lower quality and not as like high resolution, not as in your face assets to make this, right? Ironically enough, again, I still think that the best animation in here uh, in terms of Ultimate Gohan is the counter, right? Like this one is spot on. The style is pretty good, right? The angles are super nice. Like this, by far my favorite animation from the Ultimate Gohan stuff. It feels like they cut corners a lot on Ultimate Gohan himself so that they could then put all of their effort, their time, and their money into Gohan Beast himself. Speaking of whom, let's go ahead and do the frame by frame for this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go through this nice and slow. I don't even know, realistically, if there's much to... I suppose analyze with this one because it is basically just the movie and I will say one thing that I can give you my sort of thoughts on with this one because I think this animation is fantastic right it's so good with this one it really feels like the CGI style it feels like it's in 3d this animation to me, before we get into the whole thing, doesn't even feel like it's a part of the same card. This LR Ultimate Gohan and all these animations that we've seen feel like they're a part of the same unit. But this animation doesn't even feel like it's a part of the same card. The style is so different from the rest of everything that we have seen up until this point. It feels like they were you know, they tacked on Gohan Beast onto this existing ultimate, well, not existing, because obviously they made it for superhero, but this ultimate Gohan from superhero, just so that they could have Gohan Beast in the game, <laughs> and they just yoinked the animations from the movie, right, which the animations look fantastic, don't get me wrong, but the style is just so good in this section that it makes me sad that the rest of these animations are seemingly so lackluster overall. And I feel like they could be better. I don't think they're bad, necessarily, right? There's definitely animations that are worse. But with how good this one is, and I understand they only have so much, you know, people power and manpower, is what I meant to say, like money, resources to put into this sort of thing. But seeing how good these animations are, like, this literally looks 3D for the Dokkan one, right? Like, this literally looks like it's a screenshot from the movie, right? Like, it looks like it's 3D, and these are just you know, PNGs on the screen. It's just so unfortunate to me that the rest of these animations, even Piccolo, did not get the same treatment of quality. But let's go ahead and take a look at everything, even this, right? You're going to see a lot here that the accuracy to the movie, even with all of these little in-between frames and everything like this, like even a little bit of like red sort of like speckles that you can see in the background here, they keep in the Dokkan version, right? We have, of course, the red, right, surround Gohan. Look at the accuracy here, right? Look at the pinpoint accuracy to how this looks in the movie, right? It is basically the same. There are some minor differences, as you can see, right? Absolutely right, with certain little posing differences, like the way that his mouth is open. Like, yeah, well, I guess it is. No, I mean, that's the same. <laughs> Never mind. I take it back. You know, it literally looks just like the movie, right? Like, it almost looks like they just took the movie and imported it into Dokkan, right? Like, this shot 
right looks exactly the same even down to the details of the circle right it looks really really good the electricity is spot on right of course even these like motion blur flames motion blur flames wow i've mixed up my words there motion blurred frames excuse me are pinpoint accurate to the film and like I don't know, am I even allowed to say that I, I almost think the Dokkan version, like, looks better? I mean, that 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 may be a bit of a hot take. I'm not sure. But regardless, these look fantastic. Look at this. This frame is the same as this one on the movie, right? Back, forth, back, forth, right? You can see, obviously, they're a little bit off-center, right, with the way that they are matched up next to each other. But you can see these frames are, you know, the same, right? Like, this is exactly how it looks like even down to this crazy psychedelic effect with like the red hot heat energy right that is coming off of gohan looks so fantastic oh man i will say it is interesting that for this shot they didn't pan up with gohan like they do in the movie here they do a little bit but obviously his entire body is in frame for the entirety of the shot Whereas with this one, they sort of pan up from his legs, right? I almost prefer this in the Dokkan one for Dokkan specifically. I think it works better for the movie. But this shot of Gohan from the Dokkan one just looks so good. This is actually my lock screen, this exact shot. I upscaled it with an upscale program that I have uh, with a screenshot from the game. Because, oh, it just looks so good, dude. <laughs> it's so good. So then, of course, um, we do have the eye open shot which looks really, really nice. And even the, like, key that is flowing around Gohan in the movie, they even have that there. You can see the lights flashing around his face, right? Even the pupil getting smaller, of course, is included. The only thing that isn't included in here, right, is when Gohan looks up, right? Obviously, there's the shot where he opens his eyes and then he looks up towards Cell Max. That is, like, the one thing that is omitted from this animation which I, i'm not opposed to right i think the animation works and i think it flows well for you know what they put in there right and then they can maybe use that animation as well for another gohan beast in the future even this shot with the angle right and the way that like the camera turns in the movie right to kind of wrap around gohan right in dokkan they do such a good job of representing that even down to like the rocks <laughs> being accurate like this rock floating next to gohan right it looks so good. The only thing that is basically different is just this one is lower quality in terms of like the actual quality of the character himself because of course the assets have to be a certain quality to work in the game, right? It can't be this HD4 quality because of the engine that the game runs off of. I will say, this was an interesting change and one that I actually really like. Of course, in the movie, this scene is very dark. It makes sense why it's dark the ambiance of the scene right things are intense obviously the sky has grown dark from all the shenanigans of the battle right and even though gohan definitely has white hair for gohan beast it looks a lot more dark gray in the scene because it's so dark and i will say i actually like that they lighten this up in the dokkan version because of course right even though i was talking about before that sometimes kind of having the suspension of disbelief where you can just basically represent the scene fully and not necessarily take into account what attacks the characters the enemy side are throwing at you right this one i feel like is almost like oh well they're not necessarily in a dark area in this scene so they're going to make his hair brighter even though, I mean, maybe that's not necessarily true because obviously this shot right here is obviously that they're in like a dark location, right? But nonetheless, I do like this. I like this a lot, actually, that they made it a lot brighter. I think it just works better for Dokkan, I think is the best way to describe it. It would have, I feel like in this scene, it would have looked a little bit more strange. Like, it probably wouldn't have looked bad at all, right? Like, and it probably wouldn't have even been a problem if it was like bright like it is in the Dokkan version um, for his hair. But obviously, I think it just works better for the Dokkan version of the animation, even down to the smirk being accurate to the movie, the angle that he tilts his head, even the bang, right, moves a little bit just like it does in the movie, which is crazy, right, that they have that amount of accuracy, even his gi flowing in the wind, right, and obviously this is a little bit more purple, I mean, all the effects are sort of more glowy in this scene and of course here he doesn't really have the aura anymore and that's also probably why they decided to make this a lot more bright because he technically has the aura surrounding him right 
So then, of course, all. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> this one's going to be crazy. So the lens flares, the electricity here, dude. The blue sky. Oh, it is essentially frame by frame the same. This I was so impressed with. The little beams going that are like zooming into Gohan over here to form the special beam cannon looks so good in Dokkan. You even have this little bit of perspective where it's kind of going over the rock. It almost looks 3D, right, in the Dokkan version, which is super impressive, right? They do a good job of nailing these effects, right, that the movie has with all this lightning and like this. It looks like heat. Like, you know, when you look at the road down the street in like a hot summer's day and it kind of looks like the road is moving a little bit, like that sort of desert hot effect. That's kind of what they've done for this in the movie, and I think they do a good job of accurately representing that in Dokkan. You zoom in to, of course, the boy himself standing on the pillar, and like, look at this, dude. Frame perfect. It is accurate to the movie. This shot where it zooms in is so nice, by the way. Um, again, like... Even the little bits of electricity being accurate to the way that they're sparking in the actual animation are perfect, right? Like the same angles, the same colors that flash on the screen, even like the little ones, right? Like there's a little bit of purple here, right? You can see there's a little bit of purple there. Here by his ears, a little bit of red. They got a little bit of red there, right? This is now more white, right? Red tint, red tint, right? Bright white. The accuracy is just insane to the source material, right? It's crazy how accurate they got this. Okay, so then of course we have this. It's kind of interesting, I will say, um, that for this scene, they did actually make his hair a little bit darker um, rather than with the close-up, they made it super bright. It kind of makes me wonder why they made that super bright, but I guess that is just because instead of having the bright scene be the one where you know he looks up, right, they instead use this shot because it's a little bit more iconic and just had him powered up instead, like where here he doesn't have the aura around him. Okay, so going back to this shot here, obviously this looks fantastic. Even the smoke is accurate to the original, right? It looks really, really good. Obviously the electricity effects, this looks so good, you know, right next to the movie, right? The special beam cannon when he's shouting it out, right? Looks great, again, the accuracy to the minor details is immaculate in this scene. It is insane that Dokkan, with being a game as old as it is, is able to replicate this. There are a couple of things that are different here, right? Like, you can see this little red spark that's on the Dokkan version is not present on this one, right? So there are very small differences, right? There are a couple, right? They're very far and few in between. Um, but this still looks so good, right? Obviously, now we have the close-up to the eye. And then we zoom back to Gohan lifting up his fingers to the sky literally like this kind of just looks like cam footage from the theater <laughs> what we watched it the first time to be honest with you accurate down to the sparks coming off of that the lightning effects look in the same angle right gohan's expression changing and immediately grabbing his hand at the same time right of course, then his hand whipping down to get the special beam cannon. That very, I love this shot so much where the arm is kind of covering his face. It's so sick. Very, very cool. Obviously here, right? The final shot where, and this is cool that they added this little bit of like the final bit of key coming off of his fingers that's not visible in the anime. That's cool because obviously it's then right here, right? The lighting effects are even more potent in Dokkan, I feel like. Um, which is pretty interesting for some of the scenes, but then in this they're a lot more brighter It's just interesting the color differences that they did um, between each of these scenes, right? But the special beam cannon looks good again This is a little bit interesting. I will say too because with this shot specifically another very iconic one They not only have this little gleam a little bit farther over on his finger, but um, when it comes to how close this is to the camera again, this is another one that is kind of like you know I, I'm wondering why they decided to go this route and like make it a little bit farther away because he's obviously farther back you can't see his legs in the anime version and the fingers are a lot closer to the screen right it's very interesting that they decided to make that little change so now of course we have the zoom out and of course the special beam cannon launching like these details are just insane like <laughs> 
it's appalling that it looks this good like it's shocking even this that is like this very cool almost like psychedelic effect around the special beam cannon as he fires it right is completely accurate to the original right the attack firing up this is the only part that does look a little bit weird but again funny dokkan sprite moment because of course you know you're not going to have the attack in the sky from cell max and of course it's not going to hit cell max's forehead because it just hits in the middle of the sprite um, that would be any other enemy sprite but even like this being spiked is accurate right the like individual frames here next to each other of just the way that the effects look even this part where the color splash is there right the color splash is accurate to this right with the little electricity effects as well right all of it is just so incredibly accurate to the original source material and then of course you have the shots of the beam flying off into space even a little bit of the glow on the planet just like the movie and it dissipates out now we do have this ko screen here and this is something that i wanted to talk about and kind of lead into the final talking point that i have about gohan here so with the ko screen you can see that it is gohan just standing there right for the shot where it is immediately hold on we'll get to it in like two seconds here right here right obviously it's this shot of gohan um readying up right or readying up i guess after firing the shot right kind of standing there just posed up and obviously this is what they did for the ko screen however in the movie obviously his expression changes his hair's moving his clothes moving a little bit and you can see he kind of goes huh like, did I just do that, right, type of thing, right? And in the Dokkan version, it is not present. I was a bit curious about this, because I thought, well, that seems a little bit odd that they wouldn't include that in there, because that's a pretty iconic scene, like, it's very memorable right after the special beam cannon to be like that. And I found the answer for you. I tweeted about it earlier today. Um, in the animations for Gohan. It is, oh yeah, I also, uh, minor spelling mistake. <laughs> it is just a PNG, right? For the KO screen here. The KO screen is a singular PNG. There is no moving assets. There's no moving parts, right? That is the reason why that obviously there isn't any hair movement or any expression change or anything like that on Gohan. It is very unfortunate that this is the case because I was really looking forward to potentially seeing that be represented within the animations for this. And it makes me curious because this is just another quick example of something that I feel like, hmm, did they cut corners for this again, right? With some of these other scenes that we've been looking at, we've been kind of looking at this and going, hmm, it kind of seems like but there's a couple things that are usual little details that would they would include that they didn't decide to include here. And it almost kind of gives you the impression that these units were rushed. Clearly, the Gohan Beast animation was not rushed by any stretch of the imagination, right? Like, it's literally perfect, right? But for this KO screen, you're telling me they're just going to put the PNG? Right? Like, even some of the worst animations of this year, and don't worry, we'll talk about those in the top five worst video. Even some of the worst animations of the year, in my opinion, still have movement on their KO screen, at least leading up to the final screen where it pauses, right? And this is the case for Gohan here, and it's almost the same thing with Piccolo, where Piccolo it just kind of has a little bit of a zoom um with piccolo just kind of standing there right but for gohan it's literally just a png so it's so strange to me that they would do this and not just include that because that just really feels like a cut corner the final thing that i wanted to talk about with gohan here right and talking about how crazy accurate that this is to the anime right like the frame by frame basically it's you know anime accurate to the makanko sapo scene right with this, if we take a look at the assets for Gohan here, you can see that it is basically a slideshow. They have done this for a couple of units, and they have done this for, funny enough, some of the units that have the best super attacks in the game, 
gee, I wonder why. Maybe it's just because it's a rapid succession of slideshow, right, to make it just as accurate as possible and they don't have any moving assets because the moving assets are just the frames on the screen, right? It is no wonder that these scenes look so good because they basically just redo everything from the movie, right? They just took the existing scenes with Gohan and, you know, redrew them in the Dokkan style and essentially put them in like a slideshow here um, with all these different scenes. Obviously, they're cut up differently on all these different asset sheets that make up the unit's animations here. Like, they're all in these different spots and whatnot, right? Like, you know, of course, it's not just one frame as each individual asset, but you understand what I'm saying here, right? So this is the reason why this animation looks so good because it's basically just all of these assets like this right it is interesting to note i will say some of these are a little bit different you can see that the aura and gohan's face is a separate piece here as well gohan himself when he's standing on the rock is also separate you can see gohan just right there right and then if we go to here we can see gohan's face is present here that then gets meshed in with the rest of the animation um, that obviously was missing Gohan's face on some weird like SCP type of thing. And then, with Gohan standing there, let me see if we can find that. Here, right, obviously with the scene with him standing um, above, you can see that obviously these assets have like a hole in them essentially, which is of course where those little mini Gohans that we saw um, would then be put into, you know, the game's code handles all of this. Of course, nobody's reanimating all of this by hand. So that's why this looks so good, right? And I will say it is interesting to me that they decided to do it this way with a little bit of like some of these having holes in them and then having the um, assets kind of fill them in, right? Because I don't think I've ever seen them do that before, even in these animations where they kind of just do a slideshow, basically. Um, so that is why it looks so accurate. And especially compared to then like the rest of his assets, you can tell like, you know, here's some of the stuff from his 12 and 18 key, right? Clearly, right? Hi, <laughs> Gohan. Clearly, you know, of course, not of not only just the same like asset quality, but certainly even just like not of the same general quality here of assets and how nice I guess it just looks to look at, I guess would just be the best way to describe it. So it's all just a very interesting amalgamation of things that kind of make up this unit. I think that this technique that they use to get as accurate animations as possible is really good, very cool, and obviously it is a fantastic way to get an animation as accurate to the source material as possible. I don't think it's a bad way to do it, and it's certainly a great way to do it considering how old Dokkan's engine is, and doing this in the way that they do their quote-unquote traditional animations for Dokkan would be next to impossible, right? Same thing with like the fifth year Gogeta, they use this technique a lot, right? He had a lot of stuff like this where it was just the slideshow, essentially. So, it doesn't surprise me that they do it this way because it's almost, you know, impossible with how old the game is to be able to do it from all the separate assets without just basically doing a slideshow. And I know that I can't expect them to do this for every single animation, and I don't necessarily want them to, because part of the charm and part of the fun of Dokkan is having these Dokkan-esque animations while still being accurate to the movie, right? Dokkan certainly does have a little bit of its own art style while still staying accurate to the film, and of course the anime. But at the same time, if you're going to have cases like this, where it feels like so much of this unit is just lacking, right? And then you have, <laughs> you know, pinpoint accuracy, right? I don't think that they should do a slideshow every single time. But I think that they should put more effort into making it a more consistent quality. Because it really feels like that these are just not even the same character. This feels like it's a different unit from the Gohan Beast animations here, right? So I think that is everything that I have for you today. That is basically my complete thoughts on Gohan here. Again, I think that this active skill, like 
bar none, is the best in the game. And it's unsurprising why. It's basically just the movie, right? Like, we just took a look at the assets, right? With the slideshow, right? But it is just such a shame how, not only the KO screen, but the rest of this unit has been done, right? With a lot of these animations feeling really lackey, chopping, obviously, the whole thing with the Broly movie, Kamehameha, is just so ridiculous, in my opinion, um, that they even reuse that again, because they've reused that so many times. I hope I never see that stupid <laughs> move again in Dokkan. I'm praying, bro. Unless they just make an updated version of the character from that movie. But, this unit leaves a lot to be desired. I will say, despite these animations not being as good as they could be, in my opinion, and definitely could be so much better than they are now, and despite everything with this celebration right being kind of all over the place and having just a lot of issues in general right not even talking about the animations or the units themselves i will say the one thing that i am happy about is that at least where gohan beast is in the card and where he is present in Dokkan, he looks amazing. I think that that is one positive that we can take from all of this at least. Gohan Beast himself looks so good where he's in the game, right? That is one thing that I think I can absolutely take a little bit of solace in, is the fact that the boy himself looks absolutely fantastic. I am very happy about that, that at least they didn't fumble the bag on the actual animation itself of course he's not playable and they absolutely fumbled the bag there i mean i literally made a whole video about that but i'm glad to see that at least the boy himself looks good where he's in the game so please let me know what you think in the comment section below i would love to hear what you have to say about these animations i think for this guy my final thoughts are pretty simple not really a fan of the ultimate gohan animations they're not terrible they're not the worst i've ever seen by any stretch of the imagination but they're absolutely not the best that i've ever seen right in fact i would put them definitely lower on the dokkan totem pole but for gohan beast he's perfect except for the chaos screen right like that one uh, you know and the KO screen you won't always get because obviously you have to, you know, kill with the move to be able to even see that, right? So it's kind of weird considering that a part of the animation because it's like kind of a bonus because you only see that sometimes, right? Granted, you probably will be beating the enemy with this anyway, but my point still stands. The actual animation for the boy looks fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you in the next one. Dokkan Assets out. Peace.